I'm the cat toy lady. Today's toy is going to be another, we'll say experiment. I want to see if I can make a cat bed that looks like a UFO. There's so much talk in the news about spaceships and the fact that they may be real. Why not give your cat a fun UFO cat bed? And you know what the cool part to it is? It's going to have a clear dome that they can look out of on top and they will enter kind of from underneath it. And this is a punch bowl from the dollar store. I've never made this before. I have no idea, like some of my other toys, if it's even going to work. But let's face it, if it doesn't, I just erase this. <laughs> so let me show you some of the things I pulled out to be able to make the UFO with. Again, the punch bowl from the dollar store. I have two different types of tape, clear tape and green tape. The green tape is going to be on the inside where no one will be able to see, but I want you to be able to see how I'm folding and using the tape. And let's face it, clear tape you're not gonna be able to see easily. So I'm gonna use the green tape just so you know exactly what I'm doing with the tape. My glue gun on the low temperature setting, my X-Acto. Some paint. I have a pile of foam poster board to cut up. My cutting mat. I think that should get us started. I'll let you know as we go along if I end up using anything else. So let's see if we can do it. Let's make a UFO. To get started, I'm gonna tape two pieces of foam board together. I'm going to tape them down their long edge. Now I'm going to find the exact middle of the sheets. Remember, foam board is not always cut to exactly 30 inches, and each one may be a little off from the other, so just do the best you can. Mine is 29 3 4 inches, so I'm gonna find the halfway point. To make it easy, I just had about 14 and a half inches. We'll have a little extra wiggle room on one side, no big deal. One other item that you may need to make it easier, you may have seen this in some of my other videos, I have a flexible tape measure, that I use for making circles. It's missing the first half inch, so I always just add an inch to whatever I'm doing. And I use a push pin as my anchor to help me with the circles. That way I can move it up and down the tape measure as I need to, too. The next step, I'm going to do a circle that the radius, that means half of it, is 14 and a half inches. And we already have that marked as our center point. So here we go. I put my push pin into the middle my pencil through the other side. I pull tight and I start making my circle. Always keep your pencil straight up and down. That'll help keep your circle perfect. Now we need to make two more circles. One that is the same size as the bowl but not as the lip of the bowl, but the actual bowl itself. That way the lip will get caught on the edge. So it's important that when you measure your bowl, you want to measure from the wall of the bowl to the other side of the wall. After you get that measurement, you're going to line it up in the center of the circle that you've already made, and then you're gonna make it the second circle, which will be one inch bigger all the way around from your bowl. The bowl is 10 and 3 fourths across that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and find the center point for that. The easy way to do it on here, since I already know that I'm starting at my one inch mark, I'm going to add an inch and fold it in half and that'll give me my halfway point. Again, I'm doing that because this tape measure is missing the first half inch and I stick my pencil lead right in at that one inch mark. So I just forget about that first inch and always add an inch. So I need to go up to 11 and 3 fourths. There we go, I have my halfway point. And I'm going to draw a circle again. There we go. So because we're going one inch out all the way around, we're going to go two inches bigger to find our radius. So we are at 11 and 3 fourths, so I need 13 and 3 fourths. And now I have where to put my push pin. And draw your circle again. And now I need to mark out the circle like a pizza. Straight down the middle. And then I need to find my 90 degree. To make it easy to find my different angles that I need, for making my, we'll say, pizza cuts into it. 
I took the bowl that I already have and a piece of paper. Trace the bowl and then now I can fold the paper in half as you can kind of see that I've done. And then from there I can fold it into quarters and eighths so I can get the right angles without having to use anything fancy just to keep it looking nice and even. So let me show you how I'm going to use this. To be able to find my 90 degree, what I'm going to do is just fold this half of my pizza in half again and make a quarter. And then from there, I can line it up with where I know where my hole is and I can mark a line. And I can line everything up again and draw another line. It just gives me a guide to be able to use my ruler all the way across. We're not going for perfect, we're just going for pretty darn close. So now we have four pieces. Okay, so we're gonna pause here just for a second for me to say I started doing it one way and then I drew it out and realized, meh. So, ignore any erase marks you may see on the paper and now let me walk you through that after you have it quartered, do not make eighths. So the right size, I think, should be taking your quarters that you already have and make two more lines to make them into three pieces in each quarter. So instead of having eight wedges on your pie, you will have 12. Let me show you. So using your circle that you've already cut and you have your quarters drawn out, take your circle and fold it in half like this. Easy way to do this to make this into three sections. So you just kind of eyeball it and give it a fold here and there, making sure that your edges are fairly close. Now that you have your third line up, one of the edges of your quarter, and then use the other side and draw your line. And that will give you a third of a piece. So here we go, all the way down across. <laughs> one third of a quarter. Then flip it and do the other side and do the other edge of that same piece. See, I'm just gonna make my line. I'm gonna go back, line everything up again. Do, 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 do. And of course, remember this doesn't have to be exact. We're just going for pretty darn close. There we go. So our quarter is now in three pieces. Now do your other two quarters. We now have 12 pieces. That very center circle, we're going to cut it out and that'll be our next step. Then once we get that part cut out, I'm just going to lightly cut through the top layer of paper on the foam board on that second widest circle. Just make a little score mark so it'll bend easily right there. Just watch. And I'm cutting all the way through. There we go. Now that second circle, I'm just going to do a light scoring. Do not cut all the way through. Just barely cut through the paper. Now cut out the circle that goes all the way around. Now that you have the base of it cut out, what we're going to do is tape two more pieces of foam board together and trace the outside of this and cut it out. So we can have two circles, one with a hole in the middle and one without. Just like we did before. Line them up one on top of the other and use your top piece to trace and cut this piece out too. I'm going to line it up again and in the center I'm just going to temporarily tape the pieces together just so while I'm doing the next step things won't shift. Quick tip, make a pull tab on your tape by folding it over on one end. That way when you have to remove it later it makes it easier. Also, as you're taping it down, those pie wedges that we made, don't put your tape on top of those lines. Go for the center of them. 
there we go. For the next step, we're going to be cutting out wedges that are one inch thick, a half an inch on each side of the line, all the way down to that outer circle that we drew before. We're going to do it on each line that we made. That's going to help give our spaceship a curve to it. I'm going to be cutting out a one inch chunk right here. So I need to go ahead and make my marks. You can see my half an inch mark just going down. And I'm gonna do that all the way around Now, from that outer circle that we made, from this point to this point, we are going to draw a line. And we're going to do it on the other side too. See? And repeat on the other side. And you're going to do that all the way around again. Now after you straighten back up and gotten your back to stop cramping, you're going to cut along those marks that you just made. So from here to here is gonna go. And you're going to cut through both layers at the same time. Just like that. There you go. Do this again all the way around. Okay, it's cut out. We can now pull the tape off that's holding the two pieces together very carefully. And just so you know, since I know there are some of you out there that don't like to use foam board, you can do this out of cardboard. You just have to find the right sizes. So you remember how we just lightly scored going all the way around on that outer circle that was in the middle? We're going to now just bend the little petals that we've made on that spot. The trick is to keep your hand firmly in place on that little lip on the inside. As you're holding it that way, you can't accidentally rip or bend something where it's not supposed to. So I just put my hand in the right spot and bend up. Do that all the way around. And now we're going to tape these pieces together. Again, I'm using the green tape so you can see what I'm doing. At home, you can use clear packing tape. Just like that tape all these little petals together. Make sure they are pressed firmly together. See the shape? It's really starting to look like a UFO. And especially if you stick this in the middle. Ah, it's gonna be so cute. Now switch out the pieces. And using that same technique that you just held your hand over where you didn't want it to bend, just bend up the little petals again, all the way around. And then, so the cat can be able to get into the cat bed, I'm going to cut off two of the petals, just straight across where you had cut them before. You can use a ruler if you want for a straight edge. I'm just going to eyeball it. There you go. And you are going to take this into the same shape that you did on the first one. Just repeat it again, all the way around. Because the bottom is going to have some pressure of a cat lying on the inside, I am going to put just some tape running across a few pieces for reinforcement. Can you see how it's kind of coming together? To be able to get the bowl to stay in place, I'm going to fill up this inner ledge. It's kind of a curve. And I am going to run glue all the way around and then kind of do a good blob on the paper itself, connecting the bowl and the paper, but nothing that's visible from the outside. Little trick, I'm using a dollar store laundry basket, the large size, to help keep everything lifted up so the bowl sits in the right place for the gluing. I'm pushing down the bowl to help it stick in the glue as it cools. If you do make a mistake and get some on the bowl, it'll just peel right off once it's cool. Now I'm gonna go along the edge again and put more glue. There we go. Now just let this cool. Oh, and don't forget to peel off the tag. Now for the last fun step, 
attaching them together. Yes, you could use glue, but gluing foam board can be a little tricky. I'm going to use tape to connect them together, and I'm going to make the top overhang the bottom just a little. Looking back, if I would have made these pieces going along here instead of it being curved, if I kept the line straight, they'd glue together just perfectly. But again, I was winging it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let the top just overhang just a little, and I'm going to run tape just in the middle of each panel. So I'm gonna take the tape and I'm going to fold it in half and stick it down here. Then when I set the piece on top, I'm going to press up with the tape, leaving that overhang. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. So I think it'll be easier if I go ahead and put all my tape down and then reach in and try to get everything into place. Kind of see what I'm doing there. Keeping it at this angle up and down is really helping me put things in the right place. All right, so now you can see exactly what I did. Can you see in? All right, our spaceship is done. Ooh, except for some color. Paint it however you want. If you want it to look like the alien ship on the Simpsons, Flight of the Navigator, let your imagination go wild. I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. No silver paint. It's hard to find a non-toxic paint in silver that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So I'm going to paint mine in gray. I need to mix up my paint. And yes, it's from the dollar store. Make sure you get the under edge and the seams. Okay, here we are. Ooh. It's not quite dry yet. I'm gonna let it dry overnight. Then I'll let my cats check it out and I'll put some bedding in it. You can see the area for them to be able to walk in. It's going to be so cute when they stand up and look out of it. Little kitty cats from outer space. I'd say it turned out pretty darn cute. Are you curious about other things that are out of this world that I can teach you how to make? Check out these videos. And if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. I make cool toys every single week for you to make for your cat. Now go make your cat some toys.